Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast about access. And this time we're going to dive into relationships. So relationships are really the foundation of a relational database. They define and describe how the tables are related, which makes everything else work. It makes the queries work, which are actually stored SQL, structured query language statements. They make the forms and the data entry work, and they make the reports work. So I'm going to start with that database that I have in my Concepts of Database Management book and look at the relationship screen. And by the way, in Access, you get to the relationship screen by clicking the Database Tools menu and the Relationships button. And when you see the relationships lines with the one and infinity symbols in your relationships window, you know somebody has given some thought to setting up this as a healthy relational database and how critical they are to both the accuracy of your data and the performance of your database. And because you only set it up once per database, it's hard to get good at something that you only potentially do once for the database. Let's examine the relationships in this database. We have four tables in the database and we have four tables in the relationships window showing you the fields in each of the tables. In each of these tables, I've made the first field the primary key field. If you read this to yourself, you can say, one company can offer many jobs and the connection is through a common field called company ID. The primary key field is always and forever on the one side of the relationship. The field on the many side of the relationship is called the foreign key field. One company can also have many contacts. So in this situation, our contact ID is the primary key field for this table, but is not used in a one-to-many relationship with another table. If we were to keep track of the conversations that we'd had with each contact, then we might use that contact ID field, create another table, and have one contact have many conversations. So the relationships mimic how your business works. One industry can be related to many companies. And you might say, well, since we're duplicating the industry field here, why would we create a one field table in the first place? Why not just list the industry here instead of list the industries that are available in the industries table and then duplicate those industries in the company's table? And the reason why we have one field tables sometimes is to constrict and confine the values that can be put in the company's table to only this list. And let me illustrate this by opening up the company's table and showing you that industry field. And here are our industries that are listed in our industries table. And let's say we have a new industry. I'm going to open up industries and I'm going to put in a new industry. And that's going to be software development. Here's our software development new industry in the industries table. I'm going to save and I'm going to close this. I'm going to open up the company's table and in our industry drop-down list, there's our new software development industry. And we can choose that software development industry. But if we try and choose a new industry such as space exploration, Access is not going to allow us to do that because that industry is not in our industries table. So I'm going to have to OK that error message and press escape and go back to the original industry. So by having these one field, sometimes we call them lookup tables, we can constrain the values in a particular field by saying, I only want the industry values in the company's table that first exist in the industry's table. But getting back to our relationships, how do you set up the relationships in your relational database in the first place? And that requires business knowledge of how these subjects relate. For example, let's look at the Northwind database. The Northwind database is a sample database that Access provided in an effort to help people learn about Access databases and what they can do. It has these eight tables or so. It has many different queries. It has an example of all kinds of different queries. It has an example of all kinds of different forms and all kinds of different reports. By reverse engineering the tables, queries, forms, and reports in this Northwind database, you can really learn a lot about access. And so we can start reading these relationships. One supplier can offer many products. One category can be in many products. One employee can take many orders. One customer can make many orders. One shipper can ship many orders. And then think about a typical order. One product can be on many orders. 
and one order can have many products. That's called a many-to-many -many relationship. And a many-to-many -many relationship is resolved by a, a third table, often called the junction table, the order details table. So one product can be on many orders and one order can have many products. Now this order details table has a two key primary key field. They're taking the order ID and the product ID together. Those two things together need to be unique because you wouldn't put the same product on one order multiple times. You just change the quantity value. So in this case, in this junction table, in this case, they have a two field primary key field, but that's not really necessary. It's just how they set this particular table up. We could have a unique order details ID, auto number field, and that could also suffice as the primary key field. Many to many relationships are always resolved by a third table. So as you're setting up your relational database, if you say to yourself, well, one employee can take orders for many customers and one customer can order from many employees. See how that's resolved with this third table, the orders table. So any two tables that have a one to many relationship with the same third table have a many to many relationship with themselves. So we have one, two, three tables that have a one to many relationship to the orders table. Hence, employees and customers have a many to many relationship and customers and shippers have a many to many relationship. One customer can, can order from many shippers and one shipper can ship to many customers. And also shippers and employees have a many to many relationship. One employee can create an order from many different shippers and one shipper can take an order from many different employees. There's actually three types of relationships that a textbook will talk about. A one-to-one -one relationship, that's where one record in one table relates to one and only one record in another table, which begs the question of why are you not just putting all those fields in one table? But sometimes there are some edge, very rare cases where a one-to-one -one relationship makes sense because you're trying to separate the fields that describe one thing into two tables, either for security reasons or because you just have so many fields you can't fit them all in one table. Access, I believe, is limited to 256 fields in one table. The key relationship that you need to know about is the one-to-many relationship. See how all these relationships are one-to-many? There's always a one symbol and an infinity symbol on each one of these relationships. The relationships in a healthy database are typically all one-to-many. However, theoretically, we can have a many-to-many -many relationship, and how that is resolved is by creating two one-to-many relationships to the same table. Now, I used to work for a company where an employee was devoted to specific customers. And if a customer wanted to order from that company, they went through a specific employee. And if that was the case, then the employees table would not be linked to the orders table because employees would not be related to orders, but rather they would be related to customers. And I would take that employee ID field, put it here in the customer's table, and say, one employee, you are devoted to many customers. So the way the relationships work have to mirror the way your business works. So I highly recommend studying this Northwind database, both the relationships and all the other objects in the database, to get better at setting up your database. So one way you're going to learn more about relational databases is to study other relational databases. And some of these relationship screens, this one's an inventory database I got from the file, new, and then starting to look at these templates for some of the common things that Access is used for. For inventory, one supplier can offer many different items. One employee can be associated with many different inventory transactions. One item in inventory can have many different transactions, and then they have transaction types. Is a fundraising database. One campaign can have different types of fundraising tasks. One campaign can have many different events, and one event can have many different donations. Here's a call tracking database. One customer can have many different calls. One employee can be assigned to many different calls. And then the employees table is actually added here twice because different employees could resolve the call. 
So one employee can take many calls and the same or different employee can resolve many calls. So that's kind of an interesting database. This one too, we see these little arrows going into the relationship lines and that has to do with referential integrity and how the join types were set up, which is going to be a topic of another screencast. In summary, a healthy relational database starts with relationships between the tables, one to many relationships with referential integrity enforced. Then data entry, querying, and reporting will all be at a higher level integrity, and your database will also perform at top speed. Thank you.